Thursday, March 22nd, 2012. We were 200,000 to 300,000 people in the streets of Montreal. We obliterated crowd size estimations. We stretched more than 50 city blocks. We were in the downtown, the plateau, and the old port simultaneously. Our passion could not be contained by the blinking of street lights, or by the confines of the cement and asphalt playground, or by the narrowness of the minds who claimed to represent us. On that day, the headlines read, Massive Student Tuition March Paralyzes Montreal. People are saying that on that day, the city grounds will halt as we stood together in protest of the Quebec government's plan to further privatize university funding and increase tuition. But really, on Thursday, March 22nd, I didn't feel immobile. In fact, to those who say the city grounds will halt, I could not disagree more. We were not halted. Mes amis, the city was not paralyzed. We were moving, but in a different way, in an electric state that some of us have never felt before. My friends, on Thursday, we were dancing. Dancing to a very different tune, a tune unfamiliar to the type of capitalism that believes civil society and democracy must play second fiddle to profit. We were singing a melody which will never be up for copyright, with instruments which cannot be patented. As far as I know, a 200,000 part harmony has not yet been commodified. I was renewed and completely inspired by the commitment, the creativity, and the energy that engulfed the city. I don't know if I believe anymore those who tell me that now is not a good time for revolution, for as Paolo Freire has said, I am more and more convinced that true revolutionaries must perceive the revolution because of its creative and liberating nature as an act of love. And as hundreds of thousands of feet danced across Sherbrooke, I felt the scale of an act of love I had never known before. And it grew and grew and multiplied upon itself. Teachers, parents, grandparents cheered from the sidewalks, from balconies, from the rooftops. Protesters beckoned with their arms a flock of swan's necks, urging onlookers to flood the streets. Friends found each other among the massive crowd for embrace after embrace. At one corner on Sherbrooke, toddlers and their caretakers carefully brush-stroked a third-story daycare window red as thousands upon thousands marched below, waving up to them. This is for you, we cried. This is for you. Is this not love? Is this what the police and our government are condemning as brutality? as violence? What about the sound grenades? What about the pepper spray, the batons, the plastic shields? What about economic violence? What about the violence of homelessness, the violence of capital? What about the violence of our prison system? What about the violence of Bill C-31, violence against immigrants and refugees? What about the violence that Chere intends to impose on 70% de la Nord de Québec? We know about violence. Madame Beauchamp, merci. Nous savons la violence, Monsieur Chere, merci. What about your institutional violence? The violence of your false rhetoric of fairness, of balance, has not gone uncontested. We can see that increases in tuition will disproportionately affect people marginalized on a basis of race, gender, ability, as well as class. There really is only one reasonable way to change all this, mes amis, which is to know that at this moment, La Hausse is breathing down our necks, but swatting at the air behind our heads is temporary relief. Next year, it'll be something else. In fact, next month, there will be something else. Tomorrow, there will be something else. In this hour, there are surely also a hundred other something else's. So, we must be prepared to continue. The fight against empire, the growth of both our comprehension and our distaste of violence and oppression must become as daily an act as brushing our teeth, as kissing our children. We must keep dancing, and the drumbeat will steadily quicken with our footsteps, and the structures of empire will weaken. In the words of Arundhati Roy, we will triumph through our art, our music, our literature, our stubbornness, our joy, our brilliance, our sheer relentlessness, and our ability to tell our own stories. Stories that are different from the ones we're being brainwashed to believe. Back to you, National Canadian Media Outlet.